Welcome to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV DJ Rain. And when we come back from the break, we're going to be talking to Jackson Independent Artist JJ Spade. So make sure you stay tuned to find out what this amazing artist has to offer. <laughs> Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV, DJ Rain, and we're sitting here talking to JJ Spade, one of the artists out of Jackson, Mississippi. JJ, how are you? Doing all right. What's going on, Rain? Not much, man. I appreciate you having you coming on the show. Not having you, but you coming on. <laughs> um, before we get into, you know, exactly what you what you what you have going on and the projects and stuff, you know, let's find out a little bit about who JJ Spade is. All right, JJ Spade. Uh I mean, the majority of people, I guess, in the Jackson scene, you probably just seen me maybe like a year ago when I'm starting to get my name out there, but I'm actually from Vicksburg. Mm -hmm. Vicksburg got my name out there a little bit, but all of my family is from Claiborne County, Port Gibson, Hermanville. And my, a lot of my songs, you hear me shout out Port Gibson, Claiborne County. I even call myself the Hermanville Hooligan, one of my songs, just to, you know, give a shout out to some of my cousins down there. I actually was I actually was born in Atlanta. I moved to Mississippi when I was around like five or six or so like that when my parents decided to come back. So, you know. I'm the only dude in Jackson right now rooting for the Falcons, but that's just me. <laughs> I got you. Now, <clears throat> let's, let's get into, you know, like the music and, um, you know, the real reason why we're here to kind of um, find out what you have going on in the music industry. Now, do you have, um, like, a, a musical presence in your family, if that's the right word? Uh, musical presence in my family, yeah. somewhat, somewhat. I, I'm probably, like, the most musical person in the family. A lot of people don't think rap is actually music, but I got a deep musical past. I've been playing the trumpet for like 10 years before I even got here. Be honest with you, if I wasn't doing that, I wouldn't be rapping because it, it let me learn about bars, let me learn about music, learn, let me learn about uh, what people like when they listen to music, what they respond to. Mm -hmm. And, okay, my mama in the, in the house has a piano, grand piano. She touches every now and then. She can play her butt off, not even going to lie, mama can play. But she don't really touch it that much. So when, you know, when they go on and stuff like that, I used to sneak over to the piano. If I hear a song on the radio play, I actually taught myself how to play the piano. Really? Yes. Yeah, so when I actually start making beats, I go to the piano first, learn how to play it. Okay, I hear this, hear that. Then I turn around to, you know, the beat machine and make music from there. So, yeah, so I can play the piano a little bit, but trumpet, like I said, playing from 10 years. Mm -hmm. And all that stuff is, like, still in my head, and I'm using all those things I did in music. I'm using it right over the music when I go on stage. It's, it's still with me. So Now... <clears throat> Going back to the trumpet, like, th is that something you played in school? Or? Yep, yep, played in school. I was in a band. That's actually, you ever seen Drumline? Uh-huh. Okay. Drumline, remember at the beginning with the freshmen, they were giving them names and doing all stuff like that. That's where J.J. came from. Okay. Okay, so when I first started rapping, so a lot of people that's in the band didn't even know what my real name was. They just knew J.J. That's all it was. So when I first started rapping, I used to just call myself J.J., and that was pretty much it. Um... Uh, and then eventually the spade came on later on, things like that. But that's pretty much where the name came from. But yeah, I, I was in a band playing the whole time, 10 years, uh, trumpet section, section leader, all those stuff. So all those guys didn't know me. SOD, what's up? <laughs> so. One question that I get asked a lot um, is, you know, how did you come up with the name? Um, you said everybody knew you as JJ, so where did the spade come in? And what's the, the meaning behind that? The spade actually got a little different meaning behind it. When I first called myself JJ, I was rapping, but, all right, remember that uh, San Francisco 49ers play at JJ Stokes back in, mm -hmm. like, early 2000? So I used to do a play on the word, so I would say JJ, and I would throw, like, a last name in it. JJ Smooth, JJ Skills, JJ Street, and Spade. And Spade just stuck after a while because the most stuff rhymed with Spade, so I just stuck with it. But number two on that, the reason I did that, at the same time around there, remember David Spade. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, when they know me, when I'm not in the booth, when I'm not rapping, they think I'm a real, really sarcastic, you know, type of guy. So Not you. Not, yeah. No, I, I can I'm be kidding. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. But, uh, yeah, so I use that as a play on the words also. So it's kind of like J.J. Spade because they, since they say I'm the type of sarcastic dude, too. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of my raps, I, I might have, like, a lot of dry humor in my raps and things like that. So I kind of put it together, and that's where... J.J. Spade came from. After a while, I started saying it so much, and when I started doing freestyles and battles, I would just say it and wouldn't even 
think about it. It was just J.J. Spade and it was it. So. Now, <clears throat> you know, going back to thinking about, you know, you on the piano and the beat machine and all that, is there like a defining point where you knew, you know, rapping is what I want, I want to be in the music industry? Is there something that happened or is it just kind of something you grew into? It, it just happened overnight. I mean, basically what happened, I'm going to tell you how I first started even thinking about rapping, you know. Uh, there used to be some guys that was down the hall. They used to get into ciphers, you know. Ciphers, you got a guy that's going around here doing things like that, and I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, I was already a fan of rap to begin with, so I wanted to jump into cipher too, but I had no raps. Mm -hmm. So I would go to the side, you know, write a little 16 bar thing, something like that, just to sound clever so I could jump into the freestyle battle. I mean, to jump into the cipher or whatever. And at first, they wouldn't even let me in the cipher. They were like, nah, you can't even get in the cipher. But when I started getting there one time, and then next time, you're like, man, come over here, you know, do the cypher. You can jump in with it, too. So everywhere I went, they wanted me to jump into a cypher. I started getting my name out there as, you know, this type of, uh, you know, freestyle dude. Because I used to just do stuff off the top of my head. I'd talk about your shirt in the middle of a rap. or talk about this girl that's in the crowd or something like that. Um, and that's kind of how I got my name out there for that. I, really, the main thing was people started encouraging me to do it. But that's on that side as far as, like, freestyling. Mm -hmm. When I started doing it, I was like, you know what, when I started doing this stuff, I started finding out more stuff about myself, about how I really think about situations and think about life and think about maybe this girl that broke my heart last week, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I go to the side and I would start, you know, writing my own songs, making my own beats, writing my own song. And when I did it, I wouldn't even let anybody hear. It was just strictly just for me and that was it. Because doing it, uh, I guess you could say I was kind of like a quiet, shy type person, you mm -hmm. know, in school and things like that. So this was kind of like my outlet. Right. Like, th I can do this when nobody else is looking. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, some guys, I, one time I was playing my music back, a guy walked in, you know, one of my boys, whatever, like, they were like, what is that? Is that you? Is you doing that? I'm like, okay, that's, that's pretty good. He called somebody, hey, check this out. You know, he doing this, he doing that, or whatever. So they started hearing my music and just started getting out there. Uh, somebody knew somebody. I started doing shows around, you know, doing the show in here. Uh, a couple guys in Vicksburg wanted me to do a couple beats for them, things like that. They heard I had, you know, I was doing beats and things like that. So it was kind of like a, a progression to it. Right. Some I wanted to do, some of, you know, people encouraging me to do. Mm -hmm. And, man, I'll be honest with you, I just, I just love music. It's yeah. like this. I can't remember what I did last week. Right. But every song I ever wrote, I can tell you exactly what I did, why I wrote it, what I was wearing when I did it. It's just, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a part of me now. Well, I imagine the songs end up becoming like, babies if you'll say like of, of yours you know that you built and cultivated from nothing so i can understand like the memory sticking with you you know like that yeah <clears throat> but we're going to take a small break and when we come back we're going to be talking to jj spade about some of the projects he he's worked on and some of the future ones coming up so make sure you stay tuned <laughs> Exposure TV, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. on Comcast Cable, Channel 18, Pad Network. Exposure TV is produced by Peaches, host and producer of On Location TV. Thanks to House of Pain for their assistance. DJs. DJs. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV, DJ Rain, and we're sitting here with independent artist JJ Spade. JJ, I know we were just we were just talking about um, you know the progression of you going from I don't want to say regular person, but you know a kid growing into an artist and how it how it happened for you. Um, what are, who are some of the influences um, that you've, you can say 
have influenced your um, your style of music? I mean, I could I could listen to that I could list that for days. I mean, the main artists I want to say I would I could list Nas, of course. I used to listen to a lot of East Coast rap. I used to listen to like the lyrical wordplay, listen to the metaphors, but at the same time they were putting in you know life lessons in there too. So I used to listen to that all the time. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, people will always say I sounded like Snoop. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't, matter of fact, when I used to play my records, they were thinking it was Snoop, but it's not Snoop. It's, you know, mm -hmm. Snoop from the East Coast or something like that. So right. I guess you could say Snoop uh, because I guess that Doggy Style album, I had it on tape and I wore it out for like two years straight every day. So had no choice but to learn how to, you know, rap like that. Mm -hmm. I guess you could say that and of course, you know, Pac, Big, Jay-Z. Uh, whenever you see me going to like another mode of my rap, and I gotta say, I gotta put twist in there. Mm -hmm. uh, another big influence, another rapper, a lot of people hadn't heard about Cool G rap. Mm -hmm. Actually, when I started like really, really getting serious about this rap music, and I heard like Eminem and Nas and, and all these guys used to say that they was influenced by him, so I went back and just started grabbing as much of his stuff as possible, and it was like, like mind blowing the work, way he was putting words in and stuff like that. So I really started listening to him, and uh, I mean, be honest with you, anything I listen to is going to have some kind of influence on me. I might listen to a, believe it or not, a Waka Flocka album last week or something like that. Mm -hmm. And when I'm rapping, I might throw in something he did. I might throw in an ad lib or, and, mm -hmm. not even, and not even be aware of it. Right. So it happens like that sometimes. Oh, another thing about the influence, like, uh, like remember how Jay-Z and Lil Wayne said that, you know, they stopped writing their stuff? Mm -hmm. So I say around like 2002 was like the last time I actually like wrote a verse. Mm -hmm. So a lot of time how I usually make my music is I just go and I just listen to a beat and I might brainstorm, freestyle, something like that until I get, until I remember it. If I remember it, I mean, it was a hot line. If I can't remember it, move to the side and move on to something else. Right. So that's how a lot of times I can say stuff that I might not be actually be aware of, uh -huh. but when I actually go into the into the booth and the session and actually go into there, I'll say stuff that I never would have thought about uh, beforehand. Right. Okay. So, so it's kind of, it really is starting to come second nature to you. Just it, it really is. I mean, to be honest with you, in the booth, in the stage, rapping wise, that's that's what I know the best out of anything else. That's mm -hmm. what I know. Um. Now we talked about the influences and. You gathering, um, you know, gathering certain things from the different artists. Kind of explain your style. Okay, my style. I guess you could take all those artists, and if you want to match up in one style, you can. Mm -hmm. Because the the weird thing about me, if you actually hear me rap, I actually rarely even use the same flow four bars in a row. I'll do four bars this and I might switch to this style because I try to keep it active like, like uh, you know, the people listen to it. Mm -hmm. Main thing my style is I rap 100% what I'm going through at the time. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not trapping. That's just me. I'm not hustling. I've never sold dope before in my life. That's just what I do. So I'm going to go ahead and put that out there. So since I don't do Good those things, props you, <laughs> right, since I don't do those <laughs> things, I'm not going to go on stage and pretend like I can do those things because right. When you do those things, you pretend to act like that, and you play a certain character and the actor, we, we see that. We know that. We know it's fake. Mm -hmm. So when I go on stage, nah, matter of fact, that's when, I, that's when I first started rapping. When I first started going and recording my own music, I was just rapping about the stuff that was going on in my mind at the time. Do I drive a fancy car? Nah. I drive an old beat-up Ford Escape right now still making no song. Throw it in a rap. Mm -hmm. People hear that, and they think it's funny. You know, am I you know, balling out of control, throwing money everywhere. Nah, I got this job, whatever like that working. I don't really like it too much. Boss gets on my nerves every now and then. Actually made a rap about uh, beating up my boss one time and, you know, <laughs> putting my two weeks notice, notice and just walking out the door. I played it for him. He was laughing. Yeah. Just so it was funny to him. So it's like anything that's going on in my mind at the time, I rap about. And then when people hear it, mm -hmm. you know, they like, wow, that's, you, that's, I've never even thought of somebody even rapping about something like that. Like me, I'm, Talking about, I'm going to take my last ring to the strip club, mm -hmm. blow it. I mean, <laughs> if I'm going to do it, I'm going to rap about it. Now, <clears throat> let, me, let me ask you this, because, you know, producing your own beats and, and having the talent to actually perform a track and writing a song, like, you know, those are three different types of talent. Um, when it comes to writing your music, mm -hmm. you know, did you take any any writing classes in school? Yeah, all, all through class. All okay. through class, I was taking writing, creative writing. I used to win uh, these contests you used to have in high school all, all the time where 
you know, you had to do creative lists. I, matter of fact, that's actually another reason I started rapping to begin with. It's funny because before all this rapping stuff started, I was always in creative writing. Mm -hmm. I was always writing poetry and things like that. But to be honest with you, you go up and you're trying to holler at a female, you can't say, yeah, I, I write short stories. You can't say that. You can't say I write poems. But you say you're a rapper, that's a completely different situation. So mm -hmm. all I'm doing is take the same stuff I was doing before, rhyming it, bam, I'm a rapper. Hey, don't sleep on the poet. No, <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I actually got in one of my songs, I got in trouble with the spoken word poet one time, but, you know, I'm not yeah. going to get into that right now. <laughs> um, all right, so tell me about your, and, and when I say very first one, I mean, I'm talking very first one. Tell me about your very first project or song that you did. Like wow. the very first one. Not, not something you put on a mixtape. I'm talking. The very first song. Even if it's only 30 seconds long. Uh, it was, I guess it was, it was called Space Age Slang, and I guess it was. It was an old song. I can't even remember the hook to it. It was basically, I was trying to relate rapping to, you know, the dope game. And I was basically like, it was the same thing. Because when you do it, it's actually like, you're still hustling. You're still, at, you're still out there trying to get your money. You're still out there trying to get everybody to know what you're doing. So it's, it's you know. Mm. It's a lot of things that you can take rap music and relate it to in your life. Right. So, I guess it's my first thing. Uh, <clears throat> so what I mean, what did you think about the first song? Right? I sucked. <laughs> I, mean, I bet you didn't think it then, did you? No, I thought it was the best thing smoking <laughs> since then. I thought it was the greatest <laughs> thing ever. I sat around and played it five times a day, and then I played it for somebody else. They were like, mm, nah. <laughs> so, but that's fine because every mm -hmm. time I let somebody hear my music. At first, when everything I made was like the greatest thing ever made back then, but if I hear somebody play, if I play it for somebody and I gotta get a feel from what they're thinking, then I'm like, okay, I know where I need to go from there to you know make them listen to that. And I mm -hmm. kept working for it, but I will say it's the first breakout song I had. And if I say this song right now to anybody that knows someone, it's "Sucker for Love." Mm -hmm. I play, I did that song, and it was just another song. I was just writing one, think about it. Uh, I did it at a, a talent show one time, local talent show, things like that, and I did the song. And everybody just stopped everything they were doing, just listened to everything I was saying because what they would, basically the song was about is I was basically telling this story about how I was, no, it wasn't even me. It was about, I was telling a story about this guy that was going after this girl and couldn't get anywhere with her, even though she had been with all his buddies, things like that. So the next verse was about how she's trying to get with this guy and he's out there doing all this. So when people in the crowd hearing it, they relate to it. They think, oh, he must be talking about such and such. He must be talking about such and such, or he must be talking about them. But in the story, I was actually talking about myself. Mm -hmm. But I was telling it in a, I guess you want to say, second person view or something like that, second, second hand. So it made it seem like I was talking to myself about a situation I went through. Mm -hmm. And when people heard the song, they was like, man, that's, they could relate to it. Right. They've been in the same situation. I think that's like the, one of the, the right formulas for a success of a song is making sure it can relate to people. Mm -hmm. You know, because I think that gives a song longevity. If uh, if the more people that can relate to your music, then I think the longer you end up lasting. And and the weird thing about it is that it took me like thirty minutes to even write that song. Yeah. So it was just another song I was doing. I was just doing songs left and right, but that was the one people connected with at the time. You know, and that's how I kind of first really got my name out there. People knew who. J well, the first time they took JJ Space seriously because. You say you're a rapper mm -hmm. in Mississippi, that's like the lowest thing you can possibly say to anybody. No one cares about a Mississippi rapper right now. So you got to do something to take the next step to make people take you seriously. All right, we're going to take a small break, and when we come back, we're going to be talking to J.J. Spade about some of the projects he has coming up. So make sure you stay tuned. Exposure TV, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. on Comcast Cable, Channel 18, Pad Network.
Exposure TV is produced by Peaches, host and producer of On Location TV. Thanks to House of Pain for their assistance. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV, DJ Rain, and we're sitting here talking to independent artist JJ Spade. Uh, Spade, we were talking earlier um, about influences, um, stuff like that, um, songwriting. Now let's kind of get into talking about some of your past projects. Okay. Um, fill me in on, on what you've had going on in the past. Past projects, I guess, uh, like the first big project I was associated with, I actually did a, a a whole album for my brother. Mm. Uh, he had a, he actually had like a breakaway song that I produced the beat on, and I did a verse on called "Get Your Hands Off Me." It was actually like a it was actually like a club bang in Vicksburg at the time. Mm. I actually I didn't know how big the song had gotten until I actually performed it at the City Auditorium in Vicksburg. Mm -hmm. And when I went on stage, the crowd actually knew the verse mm -hmm. when I went on stage. That kind of like blew my mind at the time right there. So. That was that project. It was about like nine or ten songs in the project. We were selling them out the trunk, left and right. Had a CD burner that, you know, burnt up on me like after the year because we were making so many copies of selling them. So what was the name of that project? Dead to the World was the name of the project. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. How, did, how did you come out with that? Oh, it wasn't me. It was actually my, my brother's project, but I was the main one that did all the beats on it. I had, I was pretty much like on half the songs on the things okay. like that. So, uh, I mean, basically, I guess he, the reason he said he called the project because we had been working on, both me and him had been working on the, the tracks for so long that we kind of like wasn't really out there, you know, to seeing what everybody was doing. Everybody was like, well, what are they doing? You know. So that was one project. I guess the next big project I was kind of associated with. Then I had my other song. I was always having like mixtapes I was having like that. I think I called one of them Game Over. It was pretty much just like a compilation mixtape where about like 20 songs. No, it was actually like 25 songs. But the way I was passing out to people, and it was free, I was just giving it to people, mm -hmm. but I never gave people the same track. I give these people like 15 tracks over here, another 15 tracks over here, and people were like, man, I love this song. And the other guys over here like, well, I never heard that song. I want that song too. So I just was putting it out there to see what people think about that one. Mm -hmm. Then uh, not long ago, I guess about 05, 06, my boy O-Dog, he, he dropped a uh, major track. He's from Macomb. Mm -hmm. uh, he called it an album Flipside, where he had a lot of tracks on there. And uh, he, he called me up and he wanted me to do some features on there. And one of the songs I actually had a feature, now I actually had a song on the last song on the album called On Everything I Love, where I was just letting it just go all out. Because to be honest with you, I've been rapping for so long at the time, almost kind of like fed up with it, that I was doing all this stuff and I feel like nobody was like really relating to the talent. So that was like me saying, if I want to make one song, what would I put all into it? And I just left it on the table and then people start hearing like, whoa, you need to hear this track, he's doing this, he's doing that. I even saw a couple of internet sites was uh, mentioned about that song, talking about the things I was saying on that. It was basically like me just talking about my job, talking about uh, how I feel about music, my family, everything. I even had a, a situation in there about, uh, you know, past relationships and things like that, and mm -hmm. everybody could relate with that song too. So, mm -hmm. but that was their project with him. And I, I threw some other verses on there too. It was, it was, it was a fun project. Working on that project, showed me the process on how to make an album because I didn't know at the time, my boy Odog didn't know at the time, but we went through the process together and there was some growing pains, like this is what we need to do if you want to make an album and put yourself out there. Right. So so that's, you know, I guess the project I can think of off the top of my head what I was working on then. Mm -hmm. so um, what projects are you currently working on now? Right now I got my new album coming out called Tax Season. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you, I know a lot of people have heard of the summer stuff before, but right now the stuff on this album is going to just blow everybody away. It's the best stuff I've done. I'm like, I feel like at top form right now, I feel like 93 Jordan right now on this album right now. Mm -hmm. it's, I got some songs in here that are just blowing people away. And it's not just like one track that people are just vibing to. This one it's like a bunch of tracks I'm playing. And when I go to shows now, they, they're loving it. You know, mm -hmm. they're loving the music I'm putting out right now. And I'm steady putting out more music that I think is on the same level as that right now. Now I know I know you said you wanted to touch on one or more of the songs that are on that project. Right, right. I got a couple tracks on the song. Uh, I guess the the breakaway number one song that people are liking right now that I'm putting out there for people to hear. I guess would be the uh, High Street. That's mm -hmm. the name of the song. Is High Street. It's the concept is real, real simple. It's just me actually just walking down High Street, but I'm pointing out everything that are on in that 
that are in the city, in my experience, of what happened in the city around the time during that time. So when people listen to it, they're going to be able to relate to it also because you got the dealership down them have a story about that. Mm -hmm. uh, the Coliseum, I'm basically making a comment of, will I ever get the chance to be in there like all these other big artists in there? Uh, I got a comment about the Holiday Inn down there, but you got to hear the album if you want to check that out. So, mm -hmm. you know, those things on that one. Uh, another track I'm, I'm kind of vibing to on there that the people really uh, catching on to right now, I say Wrong Day, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like a song where, now that's the thing about it, every song that I make actually has like different concepts to it also. Like, let me go back to High Street for a second. The concept sounds simple how if I want to make it, I got to make it a High Street. Basically, the whole song is talking about that if, if I want people in Jackson to hear J.J. Spade, I got to leave Jackson so they can hear J.J. Spade, which really doesn't make any sense. So mm -hmm. if I was from Atlanta, all of a sudden now they'll play me. Mm -hmm. and, so, and the same song with Wrong Day. The kind, and the way the concept of that song is, is it's like, yeah, I'm a nice guy. I'm quiet. I really don't do anything like that. So you're not going to see me just do anything crazy. But everybody has their breaking point. Everybody has their point that it, you just might say, you know what? I'm fed up with it. I'm just going to do this. So I'm not telling the story in this song. It's actually me just doing, saying the wildest possible stuff I could possibly say in the verse. That's pretty much what it is. Because that song is the song I can just completely just wild out and do what I want to on it. Well, we're almost out of time, but we've got a couple more things we want to touch on. Um, what do you think separates you from the rest of the pack? What, do you, what, what is it about you that you feel? The rest of the pack, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing about it. But just because what you see is what you get doesn't mean you know the whole picture. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of me. That's the whole point of my music. That if you just want to just, if I th you don't want to play spade track, you just want to hear a track or two, and you just want to just vibe to the, the music and the flow and things like that, you can do that. But if you actually listen to the lyrics, because I make sure that every one of my lyrics on there means something, mm -hmm. uh, saying something, it might, or it might even be a shout out to somebody that's directly directed towards them. So, I mean, main thing about it is that my flow, uh, my lyrics, uh, when, you hear, when you hear one of my tracks, you know it's me because I stick out. That's, that's just how it is. And one last thing before we get to contact information. You told me you wanted to express your view on the, the, the music scene in Jackson. Right. Um, so go ahead and, and give right. it to as, us. As far as the music scene, that's one of the main reasons I decided to, you know, to go ahead and, and do some things. Because I say, when I first came to Jackson, I, before I came to Jackson, I heard rappers all over the place. I heard this guy from, you know, Amit County or, you know, whatever. And I'm, you know, you mm -hmm. hear them guys before. So when I come, when I first came to Jackson, start hearing the, uh, these guys hinted, I'm thinking like, okay, I want to see what they're going to do. And then I'm seeing like Tricky, Cassius, Pi Infamous, Fifth Child, Savvy Gutter, like back to back to back on one show. I'm like, whoa, mm -hmm. it's, it's real. It's not a game here in Jackson. Okay, it's actually, they doing something down here and, and these guys are sharpening each other. So, I mean, basically I feel like this, that the bubble is about to burst here. Mm -hmm. I've, I've actually seen it happen in other locations where if a city and a scene can get so hot, Mm -hmm. That eventually has got to, I mean, because there's no reason why some of these guys right now, songs shouldn't be played everywhere. I don't, right. I don't see why not. Well, we're out of time, so make, real quick, give your contact information out real quick. Um, okay. Go Follow ahead. me at JJ Spade on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, my contact information, you need me to book or you want to do a show, is 769-257-0064. Uh, you can follow my YouTube page at Majin Spade. Uh, you just type it in at YouTube. That's it. If you go to Twitter, it'll have the link to it. So, All right. and, and my email is jjspade at gmail dot com. So you can hit me up there for contact information, and booking also. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. Make sure you check out JJ Spade and tune in for another episode of Exposure TV. Mm -hmm.